Welcome to News Desk on SiliconANGLE TV for Wednesday, October 17th, 2012. I'm Kristen Folletti. Apple has made news in something other than the iPhone 5. Intel and IBM have released their third quarter earnings, so how did they fare? Joining us now with his breaking analysis on these stories is SiliconANGLE founder John Furrier. Welcome, John. Hello, how are you? Doing good. So last night, the presidential debates were broadcast yet again on every conceivable new media device. So it only seems fitting that they brought up the U.S. tech industry in the debates. Um, even in an election cycle focused on the economy and foreign policy, shouldn't tech policy play a central role in this election? Yeah, I think, I mean, I watched the debate yesterday, so obviously my political commentary is, uh, you know, Obama definitely came out swinging. Um, and it was interesting, during one of Obama's uh, monologues where he's basically memorizing his speech, he mentioned, talked about, uh, you know, immigration, and he mentions uh, Intel and Google. And uh, last time I checked, they weren't really started uh, by immigrants, illegal immigrants. They were started by Americans. That was an interesting gaffe there that no one picked up on. But social media, again, drives this. And what I love about the election is on, on, a, on a geek side of it is that Fox News and all the, all the CNN, they go to Twitter for the results. And Twitter is just bombarded with spam. The spam bots took over last night. I saw one report and some of the things that we're seeing is about 1% of the tweets represented, you know, 1% uh, of the people represented 46% of the tweets. So, that, you know, that's interesting to see that how Twitter is now shaping the kind of the crowd. And, uh, you know, we're interested in, in, in that whole business at SiliconANGLE. But from a presidential standpoint, I thought... Um, you know, I still like Romney over Obama, and I'll tell you why. Romney um, wins on the economic side. I think he clearly has a handle on the economics. Obama looks like a deer in the headlights anytime you talk about economics or economy, and it's obvious he's being um, scripted. On social issues, Obama totally trumps uh, Romney. Romney is, uh, again, comes across as a you know, right, hard right wing right winger trying to go to the middle, and ultimately, um, he's he's not that strong socially. But I don't think that matters because I think the country is so divided that no matter who the president is, they really can't move the needle in terms of affecting any radical change at the social level. So I don't think that's an issue. However, you know, there is one party, you know, red and blue are split 50-50 in the U.S., but there's one party that's 100 percent American, and that's the Green Party of money. And the business side of the market is really, really interesting, and no one is paying attention to this in that entrepreneurship is now growing so fast that the, quote, middle class, if you will, is transitioning. And it's going to be small, medium-sized businesses are technology-driven, and that's where the tax relief really is needed. And uh, I think Obama clearly has no clue about what's going on in that particular segment. So that's a particular interest to me. Uh, I give Obama higher marks than Romney on net neutrality and other funding around um, science and technology. So... It's an interesting election. You know, it's a toss up either way, but I would have to lean towards Romney at this point, given the uh, economic issues. During the debate, Apple was the company that was brought up by one of the audience members in their questions to the presidential candidates. Let me ask you the question that was posed to them. Apple and other companies do their manufacturing in China. Are those manufacturing jobs coming back? And more importantly, should they? Are they coming back? Not in the near future. Um, I don't think they're coming back. And I think the issue is they should come back. And I think Apple and any other big company in America is going to look for the best economic benefit for their company, and they're already being squeezed in taxes. Obviously, Apple and HP are stu two still big companies here in California. And we've had uh, Scott McNeely uh, on, a, on a Silicon Angle TV interview where he said, I would never, ever start a company in California. And he said, quote, if I was starting Sun Microsystems today, um, it would fail because of the government taxes, and that's a huge problem. So, one, you know, you're referring to Foxconn and other issues around Apple. Yeah, I mean, just cheaper labor there, and they, they and they do it that way. Now, I think it can come back if the government is smart. They'll offer incentives. I mean, it's, at the end of the day, it's about economics, and it's a cost issue for these companies. So, I'm sure Apple would love to have a made in the USA label for the U.S. customers, but that's just clearly not happening right now. Now that Apple's been exposed on a national stage, do you think they'll be more likely to take action regarding their outsourcing? No, I mean, I think, first of all, Apple and a lot of these U uh, companies that get scolded, especially Intel, 
Uh, Intel has a lot of manufacturing here still in the U.S. Um, and they've been in Ireland. So they've, they've gotten kudos for that. No one really gives them a lot of praise for that. The same with Apple. They have data centers all over the U.S. That's the new manufacturing. These data factories, as we call it on the Cube, is really the future. So Apple's not like it's like running away from the U.S. Relative to only manufacturing, where labor costs are much lower, it's significantly lower, they have to go there. So, you know, when you look at the economic impact of profitability, it is the path of least resistance relative to the economics. However, if there was an alternative in the U.S., I'm sure they'd be here. With all the other aspects of tech, like big data and media disclosure that are facing regulation from the U.S. government, is where Apple's manufacturing taking place the most important tech issue that our elected officials should be tackling? I don't think so. I think it's a global macroeconomic issue around incentives for business. And this is where Obama and Mitt Romney completely differ, in my opinion. Obama systematically wants to move money from the wealthy and feed the poor. That's his whole socialism-like stance and that he's been criticized for. Um, that's just me. That's just what other people are saying. Um, what Mitt Romney is doing is saying, listen, if you have robust business, everything will win in the middle class. However, you have to provide tax relief. I, I agree with him that the tax relief in the middle class is the right way to go. And having companies have robust job creation starts with the top. Now, at the bottom, you can do all kinds of cool social programs around uh, net neutrality and offering uh, educational grants. That's the real issue in tech is that new technology, big data, whether it's education, is an enabler for a radical change. And that's what no one is focused on. So to me, the core tech issue is obviously the tech economy, which is not just the computer industry, it's every industry. If you look at big data, retail, oil and gas, financial, web, everything is in impacted by technology. And there's no discussion of that. On the media business, we're seeing massive disruption with, with broadcast and television. We commented about that yesterday. That's going through massive disruption. All the common elements here is about technology and, and neither president addressed that. I would say Romney's more savvy, but Obama's also been very generous with science grants. So, you know, that's a tough one. Speaking of the tech economy, Intel and IBM released their third quarter earnings yesterday. Let's talk about IBM first. How did they do? Um, IBM actually had good earnings. They meet the estimates. My numbers here are 20, close to 25 billion in revenue of about $4 billion in net income or profit. Um, and IBM essentially met uh, and exceeded all expectations. Um, they didn't blow away Wall Street, but they had some currency fluctuations. That was a core part of their numbers. IBM is a massive company. Um, I think they did great. I think they're well positioned. We're going to be at uh, IBM's big information on demand conference Sunday through Tuesday doing our live broadcast here on SiliconANGLE.TV, so look for us there. But IBM is well positioned. They absolutely have great business focus, the Smarter Planets, their ad campaign. They're doing some real work in the storage area. Look for advancements around storage, a kind of a smaller group of IBM, now moving into the mainstream. And at the end of the day, IBM is really, really well positioned for the big data business because we've all seen Watson you know, play Jeopardy and do all these cool things. IBM actually is really well positioned for cloud, mobile, and social. So I see IBM as a really bright future. It looked like when their individual business units are analyzed that business analytics made a huge jump with revenue up 14% year to date. What's the big data angle here? The big data angle is that IBM is absolutely has both core technology products and services that directly relate to, to big data. And that's traditional uh, computer services. IBM's core competency is in all three areas. So you couldn't ask for a better trend for IBM as a company because all those things line up and it's the number one demand in the marketplace right now for products and services. That's big data analytics. That's where companies are using their computer systems, uh, their connected mobile devices through, like say, cloud computing to actually use data to change their business for real time. And, and that's something that um, a lot of folks in the press aren't talking about as much, but real time business is about analytics and dashboards of what's happening, whether it's inventory, customer support, uh, marketplace information, all that real time information was actually never ever capturable for business. And now it is and that's transforming businesses in a radical, positive way, and that's going to change and transform our business landscape over the next 20 years. Let's turn to Intel quickly. They beat Wall Street expectations, but these expectations had been lowered by analysts after they were warned of declining sales in the last month. Any insight from the financial data? 
Yeah, well, I mean, I have some insight and some perspective on that. One, I think Intel's getting a little bit hammered here that they it's unwarranted. Really what everyone's looking at is the fact that Windows 8 was delayed. So we were at you know, Intel Developer Forum uh, in San Francisco doing uh, the, the CUBE interviews and talking to their top executives and, and top scientists. And Intel is very, very well positioned. However, in the short term, like in the past couple, past quarter, um, they were hurt from a number standpoint relative to two things. The PC tablet war that's going on, obviously Apple and Android are front and center. Microsoft's going to announce their own version with this Surface product. There's so much going on in that PC market. It's under massive transition, highly competitive, pr penetration pricing. I mean, the consumers are winning, but that's causing a lot of FUD for Intel's you know, PC, traditional PC business. So the PC business is under, under radical transformation. And two, Windows 8 was delayed. That's a key driver of Intel's core business and, and everything drives around that. The, the positive about Intel that people aren't watching is that with cloud computing and mobile and high performance computing, Intel is absolutely doing extremely well, growing very, very fast in areas like storage, for example, which is now integrated into the data center unit. I think you're going to see Intel really soar around data center, cloud, mobile, and certainly high performance computing because of things we were just talking about, big data analytics. These kinds of new expectations, these new computer env computing environments are demanding new kinds of solutions and chips and technology. That's a shift from the centralized PC to a much more distributed computing environment. That's where Intel's positioned. That's clearly where their tech is going. So I look at this short term bump from Intel, nothing more than just a small little transition, maybe a little speed bump in the way, but ultimately Intel is right on the right path. Um, towards this new concept of computing. Well, John, it looks like that's our time for today, but thanks for your commentary and we'll talk with you soon. Okay. For in-depth coverage on news of the day and the latest breaking analysis, join us daily at News Desk on SiliconANGLE TV.